This video is not intended for everyone. If you are content with the way the world is today, then don't watch this video because if you do, you will go on an emotional roller coaster ride like you've never been on before. Hearts and good nature. Yeah, Ken. Mr. President, earlier this year you told us you had ordered your administration to cease and desist on payments to journalists uh, to promote your agenda. You cited the need for uh, ethical concerns and the need for a bright line between the press and the government. Your administration continues to make the use of video news releases, which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations, fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Comptroller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh, there, there is a Justice Department opinion that says these um, pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. I expect our agencies to adhere to that ruling, to that Justice Department opinion. It's been a long-standing practice of the federal government to use uh, these uh, types of videos. Agricultural Department, as I understand, it, has been using these videos for a long period of time. The Defense Department, other departments have been doing so. It's important that, the, that they be based on the guidelines set out by the Justice Department. Now, I also I think it'd be helpful if local stations then disclose to their viewers if that's you know that this was based upon a factual report and they chose to use it. But evidently, in some cases, that's not the case. So anyway. To guarantee that's happening by including that language in the prepackaged report. No, I don't. You know. Oh, you mean a disclosure? I'm George W. Bush and I... Well, some way to make sure it couldn't air without the disclosure that you believe is so vital. Uh, you know, Ken, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a procedure that we're going to follow, and the local stations ought to, if there's a deep concern about that, ought to tell their viewers what they're watching. Part one of this video is going to show you a few small techniques that the average actor knows that they employ to create new characters uh, to generate more income for themselves when it comes to getting different roles and different acting jobs. Every actor is trained in makeup techniques and lighting and they know at least the basics when they enter into either the modeling or the acting field. These are classes that are taught by the agencies that they attend. The use of effects and post-production is something of a more of a Hollywood budget or more of a, uh, a technical background that most of these people don't have but still at least they can employ the the techniques of makeup and they know how to manipulate their faces and hair and do things that would make the average person not realize when that face is taken from real life and put into the medium of the TV when you see it through the screen in a two-dimensional form. So keep that in mind when you see the rest of the actors that are playing multiple roles right in front of your eyes and it'll make a little bit more sense to you next time you see them. The second part is going to discuss the ethical and the moral decision that these actors make when they decide to take their jobs from the entertainment world and move them into being a more political activist type of job. The first time that it happens if they're tricked that may be one thing but as they continue to pop up scene after scene, event after event, in unrelated events, then the question has to be asked, why are they doing this? What are they getting out of it other than money? I'm going to show you some key events that have shaped this nation in section 3 and section 4 of this video that you will get a better understanding of why it is so important for us to understand what this TV is, what the images that we see on it are, and how we are supposed to react and store that information. 
But before we begin, I want to show you some examples of how lighting and makeup can change a person's face to an extreme degree. Now as you look at these eyes, and I flip back and forth between the layer that's underneath them, I want you to notice the pupils don't move, but you'll notice that the lighting and the makeup has changed on both the subjects. So it gives the nose the illumination from one side to the other that makes it look much different than it actually is. Now I'll take the guides off, and we'll do it again. So there's a drastic difference between the shape of the nose just when it comes to the lighting and the actual lens and makeup. Now this is the same person again on a different angle slightly so you can see the angle changes again the width of the nose. The makeup being used changes the eye shape, changes the direction it looks and makes it look like a totally different person. the different types of lenses and the filters on the light cut the actual drastic proportions of the nose and make it so that it's more of a blur and make it look wider. Now the slight change of the face in, when it comes to the angle of the view, the point of view of the camera, just shifting a little bit gives the eyes a whole different shape and size and the eyebrows a whole different shape and size. The use of Photoshop to change the color of the pupils is easy. And now we'll show you there's the change, the difference, the change that you probably didn't see unless I put that center of the face marker. Now all these different little aspects change the overall image that you see. As you probably didn't see that much of a difference in the angle without those markers. So these are things you have to consider when you're looking at a photograph. Now I'm going to show you the reality behind these reality stories, these reality news and reality TV shows. They're far from reality. And the actors that are used in these shows, you would think that it's really harmless for them to do what they're doing, but in essence they're tricking you into seeing something and believing in something that isn't reality and that can always lead to just bad things in general. Then when we see those same individuals then taking the leap from reality TV shows into news stream events, mainstream events that we are led to believe that are real, then you definitely have a problem. Especially when the mainstream media doesn't tell you that these individuals are actors. And of course, why would they? Because they want to trick you. Their whole point of what they're doing is to lie to you, to deceive you. So when you start to see these actors show up in all different types of shows, and then you put them all together, you understand that everything, it's all fake. It's all there to condition you into seeing something that's not real. So hopefully you'll take away the understanding from this video that the television is not to be taken seriously, other than it is a serious problem. Now maybe you'll remember this individual. Not too long ago, this was on the news, and I uh, thought it was pretty funny when you find out who it actually is. The FBI has reignited a cold case that has haunted the Bureau for years. A simple little bit of advice. Whenever you see this talking head, you can pretty much rest assured it's going to be a fake story. I'm not going to play you the entire clip, so we're going to skip through to the uh, important part of who he's talking to. Who do you think that D.B. Cooper is? Well, I'm certain he was my uncle, Lynn Doyle Cooper. My uncle L.D. was wearing a white t-shirt and he was bloody. Now this actor, you might know her better as Rachel Zoe. It's, um, I don't know, I'm working, you know, the vision of what the designers do, what the magazine editors do, and just kind of growing up around that, my fashion icons, like, it's just something I always wanted to do, I just didn't know I could make a career out of it. And bruised and a mess, and I was horrified, I began to cry, I asked them what happened. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this important? Well, just 
Stick with me here for a little bit, and you're going to see how it gets important. See, on the Rachel Zoe show, she has a character, since now you know that the show is fake and it's scripted. She has a character that was an assistant that left. Here he is. With Anne's performance dress. What's wrong? The, the tool on the top part of the dress uh, is kind of causing a little bit of uh, skin irritation. Oh my god. I'm worried that it's it's gonna it's gonna become like a huge problem. The rise to the occasion like I never have before. Now this person that you see here, he's also a character. This isn't a real person. This is somebody that's reading a part that's written on a script because he's actually another actor that you've known from another show. The only other option that I have is to stay, and I know that's not an option for me. So I'm gonna make Ashley cry. I hope my hair looks okay. All right, so you got Rachel Zoe's ex assistant or whatever his name was. I don't watch the show, so. But anyway, he plays the uh, guy named Bentley in the recent Bachelorette TV show, supposed reality show, which you'll see now. That's false, too. The funny thing is that the person that is supposedly his ex wife in real life, supposedly. <laughs> Oh, come on. Well, that's one of the many moments from Monday Night's Bachelorette that made Bentley the most hated man in America. It did, and this morning, we're talking to the woman who's been married to him, Suzette Davis, is Bentley's ex-wife and mother of their adorable two-year-old daughter, Cosette. Good morning, Suzette. Cosette. That's pretty funny, too. That's almost as good as uh, Pepe Escobar with Tony Greenberg. So anyway, this, uh, this actor right here, who is supposed to be his ex-wife, is none other than the character Rachel Zoe again and you'll see something that's really even crazier now as you can see the makeup that they use around the lips like this is called old age stipple it's a foam latex rubber that makes the skin uh, basically bunch up and uh, wrinkle when it dries so it's very easy to do that plus then they cake on the makeup on top of that and uh, makes her look much older than she is but then we just adjust the opacity making the top layer transparent and we can see underneath again they're the same person look she's even wearing the same earrings it's very simple to photoshop the eyes as you can see in the uh, video of Rachel Zoe that's not her real color of her eyes so now here's where it starts to get interesting you see Cosette their supposed child here she is is none other than the child that they used for last year's season of The Bachelor as Emily's child Ricky supposedly her ex died in a plane crash she was a race car driver and left her alone not knowing she was pregnant with the child good story this is supposedly Rick and her but notice the ring on her finger that's the same one that the bachelor Brad picked out and gave her so now that you know that that show is fake now we want to take a look at this actor this Emily because Emily is the same person as Zoe and as Bentley's ex-wife but she also is in the media as an actor again for other fake media events and here we see her at a younger age on the news it was bloody murder Stop. yeah uh, make sure you notice again it's from a uh, phoenix then this guy comes from over here just shooting Mike Oates is one of five people grazed by a bullet. He now has a small puncture wound on his right shoulder. Oh, he is crazy. He's trying to control everything in the whole house like that. Joe Zamudio was inside Walgreens, and no sooner did he hear those shots than he... And I just ran that way towards the, where that noise came from. So I guess once you've been approved to do one of these fake media events, then you're just, uh, they use you over and over again whenever they can because they know you can trust you.
He opted to keep most of his comments to himself. I felt like there was nothing we could say to him that was going to matter. There's nothing that's going to matter to that kid except a needle. The shooting started here in the front yard, and when everyone heard the gunshots, they ran into the backyard, jumped over that fence, and started running. We just grabbed him, and we just ran. Bianca Vent grabbed an eight-year-old boy grazed by bullet fragments and helped him crawl over a fence to safety. His mom was shot and killed, and police say his dad is the shooter. And he's like, what? What happened to my mom? Where's where's my mom? I feel like I could see me spending the rest of my life with him. Family. And mom, he cried a little bit but I think he was just so confused he didn't know he didn't know what to think Bianca and the eight-year-old took shelter inside a stranger's house down the block well so you say to yourself that well this is sort of harmless fun where they're just taking apart as an actor would in any type of role and basically that's it well I had to disagree with that because these actors are crossing the ethical lines. There's boundaries that they have to abide by. Now, not only do they, but the people that are producing these spots and actually propagating them across the globe as real, that is a serious crime in my, in my position here. Now, the act of social manipulation is in itself harmful, as we can see that this country is where it is right now because of the fact that we've been socially manipulated by the mass media. We've been basically conditioned into thinking certain ways and we think that that way of thinking is founded on factual information when it's not. All those facts that we thought were solid are out the window and our foundation now has been based on something that's a lie. So we see that there is a harm when it comes to these actors playing this type of role. Now we take it to the next level of the fact that in that little clip we saw Joe Zamudio, one of the actors in the Gabriel Giffords drill. That in itself is the next level of corruption, the next level of social manipulation and perception management, and the fact that it was propagated by our government again, and still is supported by those key figures in our government that are trying to push for agenda changers like the guns being removed from the population. That by definition of Homeland Security is a domestic terrorist act because any threat of violence or any violent act in order to persuade or to get change of political policies is considered terrorism. So these people need to be held accountable. Now we're going to show you some more examples of actors that have made the jump from just entertainment and the ethical problems that I have sort of with the social manipulation at that point to the even bigger problem of taking part in a domestic terrorist drill. One former classmate called Cho the question mark kid because he once wrote a question mark on a sign-up sheet instead of his name. Sarah Stevens is a junior here at Virginia Tech and a former CBS News intern. You caught that, correct? A CBS intern. Now, she's also a Dave Vice associate, and we're going to get into that in a moment and find out who she really is. She and Cho were in the same playwriting class. Talk to me about his demeanor. What was he like in class? Um, I wish I could say more about his demeanor, but honestly, I had classes with him for three years, and he was known as being expressionless. He usually sat in class and never, I never heard him speak once in three years. Um, Which is so unusual. You're in English classes exactly. with, it's all about self-expression. Exactly. And so that's why until this playwriting class, I had no idea um, as to what his mental state was like. I had no idea as to what kind of personality he had because... As mentioned, she's a Dave Vice associate. Dave Vice's Facebook friends list has many, many, many interesting people that you should look at. We'll get into some more of those people in the next section after this, and I think you're going to be very surprised at what you find out.
next, Dr. Phil. Have you ever felt abused by the system? She says she found herself battered and in jail after a routine airport security check. He slams my head against the table. My God, I'm getting beaten up. She is mad as hell and she's going to do something about it. Suing is as American. Play for no one. Bravo's millionaire matchmaker recently featured one of these lonely, wealthy ladies who puts it all out there. So get a load of this load. Oh my God, there's all these guys here. They're all for me. I love football. <laughs> Will you tackle me? Absolutely. Anthony said he would tackle me, which I actually really enjoy because I love a guy who tackles me. What do you do? Uh, I'm a plumber, actually. I love plumbers. I'm hugging water. And remember, she's not the only one that's identified in the Pima County Sheriff Dubnik's annual awards as being part of the Jason Guard lie. Everybody that's involved in that is in those books. Now, the other people that are involved in all the other events show up in either those books or they show up in Dave Weiss, his Facebook friends list. They were all roommates. They spoke today with CNN's Gary Tuckman. What kind of roommate was he? He was pretty quiet, uh, really. He talked about something called lucid dreaming. Simply being able to... Clean, clean. Uh, not one you can complain about, really, to start off with. Control your dreams. We... Like trying to, they're, they're telling him all these things, but he doesn't know. I mean, everyone wants a quiet roommate, right? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't friendly by any means. He was just about a person trying to struggle. What his real waking? Sometimes I guess you would say rude. The way this is my first year helping out with Hokey Helper. Now remember, I've already exposed Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, for their roles in the Columbine drill. Now again, we see Trey playing his role in another school drill that was sold to us as being a live real world event. Now the next section that we're going to discuss, you're going to see some of these individuals in this same film here that Trey is in. These individuals you can find in Dave Weiss's Facebook friends list. They are the members of SEAL Team 6. All of them are in his Facebook friends list. And I'll tell you a little story about what happened when Dave confronted me not too long ago about it. And why did I do it? Just because of the hokey spirit that we have here on campus. Uh, Alan Carroll, long snapper for the Virginia Tech football team, and we're out here today on this beautiful day. We're helping Vince Painter and Courtney Prince are hard at work, as you can tell. <laughs> so we're, we're having a lot of fun. We're here with Madison Schuler, freshman at Virginia Tech. Madison, what does it mean for you to have the Virginia Tech football players helping out today? Um, it's awesome. We got some heavy lifting, getting all my stuff in. It's a big help. Because... As you can see, all the members of SEAL Team 6 are found in Dave Weiss's Facebook friends list. Not only are they found there, but several of the individuals involved in the Gabriel Giffords event and missing individuals across the country, like the missing teen Holly Bobo, and other individuals are all found in this Facebook friends list. Now Dave contacted me about three weeks ago and he threatened me with a lawsuit if I didn't remove his his images and his name and all the pictures that I had on my website. I told him, I said, you know, you go ahead and do what you gotta do because two of your friends now have come forward and they want to tell me all about and they're part of the SEAL Team 6, the group that you organized and put together so they've told me a lot about what you've done and the next thing I knew Dave pulled all his photographs off his Facebook friends list including his own and that's it blocked me but of course I get around that but actions speak louder than words and his spoke volumes now in the next video you're going to learn about how people in his Facebook friends list are tied to the Fort Hood shooting and are also tied to the occupied movement today. Same individuals you'll see in 9-11 and also in the G20. I'll go over them in great detail in this next video, but I wanted to get this out to you so you can have something to get the word out with and build awareness to what we're talking about.
police officers there and emergency crews there uh, when this was all happening, and and they were right at ground zero when it all went down. So can we talk to you? What's your role out here right now? I'm uh, just standing by right now. Can't say what role I'm playing right now. You know, I tried to think of something clever to say in the beginning here, but whatever I say, it's meaningless. It really doesn't matter what I say. It's what you believe. Now, I can tell you that the TV is great, that everything you think is real is, is real, or I can tell you everything that you think is real is not. Does it matter? No. It only matters what you decide to do with that information, if you decide to act on that information. So to think that these individuals that you see and you believe to be under a mind control or some type of influence is ludicrous. You choose to believe what I say, or you choose not to. You choose to act, to get up, to do something, to react to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Or you choose not to react. The decision is yours. So these individuals were not mind controlled to go to the bank and cash their check that they received when they got paid for their acting that day. They weren't mind controlled to go out and spend that money on whatever they bought with it. So why do you think that they were mind controlled into doing those events that day? They weren't. No gun was put to their head. No family member was held hostage and they were forced to do what they were doing because they had to save that person. They made a conscious choice based on their moral values and they did what they did. The facts are they did what they did because they chose to do it. My name is Daenerys Guanega. I was walking to work and all of a sudden I see a jet crash into the first tower and two minutes later an explosion which a whole bunch of people including myself fell on this side of the sidewalk and then I was standing there for like about eight minutes later and a second plane just crashed and exploded and hit the other building. Now as you see it's just uh, the second tower fell. It's crazy. This is unbelievable. This is scary. I don't even know how to get home now. Yeah, now, right now, yeah, everything. I fell. I had to help a lady. She was on the floor. She passed out. We had to put water on her. A lady was giving birth down the block. On the Let's see Daenerys as she is now. I'm here because I'm a student and I'm only a junior. I'm already in debt. Why is education so expensive? Good damn question. <laughs> um, why is that? Because it's an industry. It's, education is an industry, and just uh, just in the same fashion that banks have been privatized, and and you know um, the military has been privatized in a lot of ways. I feel like education has as well. Actually, education has been more publicized or, or made. That, that was her with Adam Kokesh, Kokesh who, who we will talk, talk about later in another video, video as he is, he is an actor, actor as well. well. The, the next, next scene that you'll see is what she's, she's doing in the Dallas Occupied movement that I myself videoed here in Dallas. Uh, in it, you will see members of MoveOn.org. You also see Ryan Dunn and Jessica Chobot, his co-host for the last TV show that he worked on. And yes, that's Ryan. Give me the finger. supported the Democrats who were willing to stand up and fight, and we gave hell to the ones who So we can clearly see that this person is an actor, and she's been an actor her entire life. How many other actors were there that day? Joining me is Terry Cohen. You were actually working uh, right near the Pentagon. Tell me what you saw. 
Well, we were outside. We were in a little construction trailer, and um, we were sitting having a meeting, and we heard this boom. The building shook. The ceiling tiles fell out of the ceiling, and we ran out. So she later says that that little construction trailer was about 100 feet from the spot of the impact. Um, what construction trailer did she say? Uh, and what small construction trailer has drop ceiling? We kind of dazed, grabbed our hard hats, ran out, and there was just smoke. You couldn't get to, we tried to get to where it was to see what it was. You couldn't get there because it was just thick. You couldn't see anything but just smoke. And we were just, it was two seconds after it happened, and we just sort of, people were screaming, run, what is it, what is it? So we headed away from the building, not knowing where to go, and there was just confusion everywhere. Then. Ten seconds later, people came up and were saying, in security, saying, just get away from the building, we don't know what it is, just get away from it. But as we walked away, as we started getting away, there were people on the road, because we were very close to the exit, and they were saying, oh my God, did you see that? It was an airplane. It was an airplane. Just came, and they kept saying it was a big airplane. I kept thinking, I couldn't, I thought maybe it was just from National Airport, an airplane had hit us. Fifteen minutes later, there was a terrible explosion again, and we just went through the tunnel and away. What were you being told by security personnel, or were you being told anything? This is Alyssa Greenberg. She's now Alyssa Bloomberg, because she's married to Kenny Bloomberg. Now, she is the sister of Jennifer Greenberg, Jennifer Greenberg Sexton, and Tony Greenberg, as we see here with Kenny. Tony we know all too well, as playing many parts in the media, and we'll do a video on him. Here's his latest one, the White House shooter. As we can see, it's his ear. Now, the reason why you haven't seen her as much as Tony or Jennifer is because, obviously, she's not as very good an actor as her brother or her sister. But she still man manages to get a few parts here and there, like Holly Bobo's friend, and she is in the Pima County Sheriff Dupnick's annual awards book, as are the rest of her family. Now, Kenny, he plays a role in the Casey Anthony trial. He plays Danny Knight, the tattoo shop owner. He's also in the Pima County books as well as all the other individuals that are involved in the Casey Anthony trial. And you can download these documents from WellAware One. Just click on the Casey Anthony link at the top. So now, of course, if you're hearing this for the first time, you probably have about a thousand questions and one of them being, was the baby fake? Well, the baby is actually Annie and Tony's child, Sydney. So the video that you see that is reported to be Kaylee sitting on her grandfather's lap is actually Kenny Bloomberg's relative, as we see in this photo. Well, that means that Sidney Greenberg, Tony and Annie's daughter, sitting on her uncle's lap. So yes, the baby is fake, fictitious, it's a character. Now I've received this information via 5,000 photographs that I found online from the Greenberg's personal family photographs. From those photographs and in conjunction with their personal Facebook accounts, I would manage to create a family tree that you can download from my website so you can better understand who these people are and how they influence the media. Briefly, Maurice Greenberg, if you don't know who that is, was the ex-CEO of AIG. Another big person in the family is Maurice Strong. These individuals are extremely powerful, they're extremely influential, and you need to know who they are because they are the ones that are running this country. If you think that our government is running it, <laughs> these people are the ones that influence the government. And we'll get into that in more detail in another video. If you're familiar with my work on the Gabriel Giffords event, you know the person, Brandon Lee Pittman. Brandon Lee Pittman, as I mentioned in part one, is business partners with a person named Cliff. Cliff is chairman of the board of the Independent Film Association of Southern Arizona. So when you see both of these two individuals together at an event filming, you know that they're up to no good, as we see in the New York Occupied event. Every time that there was a situation at that event, you were sure to find either one of them or both of them standing in the background with the camera or the boom mic getting the footage. This we saw over and over again, and this also showed to me that these events were being staged. Now, what I didn't know until the other day was the fact that Cliff is none other than Kenny Bloomberg.
following clip was played by Russia Today RT on YouTube. See if you notice anything wrong with it. So as you watch this clip now, you angry? You mad? You think that the police are beating these kids for no reason at all? It would seem that way, wouldn't it? That's what RT wants you to think. Because they're trying to provoke you. Why? I don't know, but let me show you what the real clip looked like and what they cut out of the beginning. So did you catch that? Just see what the guy did in the beginning. Here, watch it one more time. Now watch as the punk in the beginning points up at the camera, then tells the officers, go ahead, ready, start. And then they look around, they say, you ready? Alright, begin. Now, you didn't see that beginning. They cut it out. They only show you the part where the kid's hand was in the air, and then he put it down to his side. So you thought that they was unprovoked. Points up to the cameraman, right? Now. Tells the officer, yep, go ahead, start, we're filming. And then they begin. Totally staged. 100% staged. Now, who is that kid? Who are the officers and who's taking instructions from who? Now let's go back to New York. Let's look and see about the pepper spray incident. See if there's anything there to say that it was staged. Did you catch the one in the gray shirt, what she was doing with her hand? Well, she's the, the protester that was topless that you'll see later on and we'll talk about who she really is, but look at her hand this time. So she's pumping her finger up and down like she's spraying a bottle of mace. So she's given the sign that the scene is coming up to get over here to film it. And once again, here you can see her pumping her finger up and down like she's spraying a bottle. Tell me what happened. Anyway, I was standing right here with these guys. Yeah. Whatever, topless. Yeah. And I'm trying to stay off the sidewalk because I know they're on the sidewalk. Uh-huh. The photo on the left, of course, is New York, naked protester. The photo on the right is Canada, the G20 event last year, with Officer Bubbles. 
Here's some additional New York footage that I caught her in that she uh, didn't really expect that she was being filmed. So she tries to cover her face. We'll visit her Facebook page to find out who she really is in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the other one that was involved with that incident that day. A YouTube video showing a confrontation between a G20 protester and an officer has gone viral and is making... Again, we see another Greenberg, Tony's sister, Jennifer Sexton. If the woman touches me, I'm going to be arrested for assault. Do you understand me? Don't confuse Officer Bubble with the individual that was arrested on the Brooklyn Bridge. Even though they do look alike, their ears don't match, so they aren't the same person. This is the protester that was blowing the bubbles that got arrested. Does she appear in a New York event? She sure does. With her partner from the pepper spray incident and from the G20. Right there behind her. Now in addition to these girls, we also see that the individuals that were arrested at the G20 along with them also appear in the New York occupied pepper spray event these two you'll never guess who she is the daughter of Johnny Knoxville and we'll talk about him much more later in the next video. Let's look at this video again and we will see some additional actors that appear in the New York Occupied as well as the G20 and one individual in here actually appears in the Dallas Occupied as well and he is an a moveon.org member. Here's one, the so-called lawyer, the one in the blue shirt here. Toronto? New York. Toronto, New York, Dallas, and move on. We were to stand up and fight, and we gave hell to the ones who. Toronto, New York, and you may remember her as in part one, the Virginia Tech shooting student. Instead of his name, Sarah Stevens is a junior here at Virginia Tech and a former CBS News intern. She and Sho were in the same playwriting class. The person on Millionaire Matchmaker. I'm a really good mom to my two Pomeranians, Bruiser and Paris Hilton. They're just like the light of my life. J.C. Dugard and the person on that got beat up by TSA. Gail, after a routine airport security check. He slams my head against the table. My God, I'm like, getting beaten up. She is mad as hell and she's going... As well as she is a Dave Vice associate. Now let's take a look at some of the actors that play multiple roles in different cities. Toronto. New York. We have the actor Paula Rhodes playing an activist in New York at the Occupied Movement. Emig McMahon at the Tucson Loftner event. Amy at the Washington DC Occupied. And then another activist at Occupied in New York. And then we also have the MoveOn.org employee playing police. And then returning the following day to play protester. On Saturday, July 16th, roughly 60 people gathered in front of the provincial legislature to blow bubbles. Valentino Nisco helped organize the event. Just because I thought people needed uh, some place to get together and have fun. Intelligent. He would help me out with like my math. He would, you know, and that's how it started off. He just kind of seemed like one of those kids that kind of kept to himself. He was very, very quiet. Um, I kind of made the effort to talk to him because he kind of kept to himself. And he was actually a really nice kid when it came, you know, because we ended up dating like probably. I think I had just turned 15. And who could forget Tony Greenberg, Toronto. I received a tip about a person named Stephanie Bast. Actually, she calls herself Von Bast, but her other relatives are named Bast, so I guess that's a stage name she's using. Well, when I found her Facebook friends list, I quickly recognized two individuals on it. One of them, her aunt, which you see here, 
and her brother, Jason, who is the Fort Hood shooter, if you're familiar with my previous work and investigations. No, Crosby just said that. Did you see any blood? Nope. Just like the Giffords. It was a drill. Now Jason has more than one connection between all these people. He is a Dave Vice friend on, and on his Dave Vice Facebook friends list. And if you're unaware of what that means, Dave Vice was the person that I found all the Gabrielle Giffords actors in his Facebook friends list. And then come to find out just recently I found all the SEAL Team 6 members on his friends list. And let's not forget he also played G. Michael the Mole. Get it? The Mole? The main doctor for Gabriel Giffords? Right. He contacted me, as I mentioned in the last video, and he threatened me with a lawsuit. Well, when I exposed the fact to him that some of his friends from the SEAL team that are supposedly dead now, you remember the SEAL team were the ones that killed Bin Laden, are actually wanting to talk, and then one did talk, and I told him about the fact that I know what he did and what his involvement was, he quickly removed all his photographs and pulled his information and blocked me, but I got around that. Let's go back to Stephanie's page again. Now, we see her and her brothers, and we know her brother on the right is the Fort Hood shooter. The brother on the left, though, we've seen him before as well, more recent. There's a new report from Natural News, it's also up at InfoWars.com, health department tyrants raid local farm to fork picnic dinner. And it's a local co-op where people produce their own sheep, their own cattle, their own uh, farm-raised uh, uh, vegetables, and then they all get together, maybe a hundred of them or so, around a big long picnic table out under the stars in southern Nevada. And you'll see some video of it coming up shot by the photographer that was there to take photos for the co-op. And uh, it's up on his YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole thing. But the uh, state shows up enforcing their state and federal regulations and explain to them that you're not allowed to butcher your own food and eat it. We are a, a, a this would be like somebody coming into my house and telling me that I can't serve the tomatoes that I just picked out of my bag. Now in addition to this obvious one, Stephanie's brother, there's some other people that are at this uh, health food raid that we need to look at. Then we'll go back to Stephanie's account and take a look at the other people. This is this is our life, and you can't eat food that's grown out of the ground. It's got to be contaminated and polluted and poisoned and then stamped. Oh, and then pay $20 for it. That's not good enough. Looking forward to moving on with my life. You know, this point. Um, my son's in New York visiting his father now. Maybe apartment, so that they could look the other way, like they do so many other times, so that we can eat food fresh off the farm. I think it's very sad, and I don't think anyone should have the right to come into someone's personal property and tell them what they can and can't serve to their friends, or to their family, or to their animals. Who, who can dictate pour bleach on your meat because it's not good enough for your pig? So all these animals were slaughtered and, and friends and family can't enjoy it. Oh, but we can go down to the store and pay $20 for some mutated meat from Monsanto. That's, that's really nice. Yep. 
episode of um, Bleep My Dad Says, and I said, really? My God, that'd be amazing. And then a week later, he's like, yeah, you got it. And I was like, yay! I'm so excited because I'm a big fan of the show. I think the show's terrific, and uh, the writers are amazing, and um, the cast is before ever incarnated but you haven't been anywhere in the physical universe ever before you are absolutely new here correct yeah I entered the time space matrix as you know that's a good word a uh, half an hour before I was born when I first came in and I became aware that I was in time space I there was th th certain things I wasn't sure about one of them was whereabouts in the shift I was. Was it I before, during, or after the shift? I didn't know. And the other one was which timeline am I in? Um, how severe is it? You know, what's going on in this timeline? I didn't know either. And I found out when I was three, and I wanted out. <laughs> I honestly didn't think I would be able to do it. At the age of three. Yeah. And you remember this totally clearly now, looking back. Oh, I've never forgotten it. It used to, used to be a, like a, a point of humor in my family, you know? How many three-year-olds do I have a nervous breakdown when they find this war still going on in the planet? This is the actor that played one of Tom Green's wives, the convicted polygamist. Right for the USDA to let us all kill ourselves eating McDonald's, but this good wholesome stuff isn't all right. So, but that's such a such a terrible thing. We gotta do something about it. What should we do? Well, me that they would use Tom Green because the fact that the same actor that played Tom Green for the polygamy thing plays another actor in the Avalon Project. Declassified U.S. government documents. Just simply look at the ears. There's no doubt. And witness testimony from former or retired U.S. military personnel confirm beyond any doubt the reality of ongoing UFO incursions at nuclear weapons sites. That's not all this actor plays. He plays a couple more roles, too. You might know him better as Richard Katzgar, Bureau Chief of Pima County Sheriff's Office and witness testimony from former or retired U.S. And it's based on a photo that many people saw. Uh, that individual identified himself to us. Ongoing UFO incursions at nuclear weapons sites. When I said explainable in the, in, the, in the pictures that we have, and, and there's nothing to... Disc-shaped or cylindrical shape. And let's not forget Dave Sanders from Columbine, the teacher that was killed. On the tribute site, they have a photograph, which is of him and his supposed wife. Well, she looks an awful lot like the actor that plays Tom Green's, one of his multiple wives. So, Dave Sanders, Tom Green, Richard Kaskar, all the same. Same actor. Mainstream media tells us that this is Warren Jeff's son. Now what I'm typically finding out is that just as in any other job, if you're a freelancer or a contractor and you have friends that have the ability to do that type of job, well you're going to of course tell your friends about that work and see if you can get them a gig too. So you're seeing the same group of actors being used in multiple unrelated events or in the same type of event just in different scenes, but we can see that there definitely is a pattern of the actors and their friends working together. And then just as we saw the Tom Green character, and possibly that is his daughter that uh, is working with him on that gig, and we know that he played in the Columbine incident, well we can see that also in the Columbine incident other individuals that have been linked to him, like this one. Now when we look at Craig Scott, we notice 
some unique things, some unique features of his face. His philtrum is crooked, and we notice when we flip this image, we can see that he now matches it. And also, if we look at Craig's hair, it looks like they tried to change the part from one side to the other, and that's what's causing his hair to be messed up, because his hair won't part naturally that way. So, when we flip that image, and remember, we're dealing with people that are trying to hide their identity, so they'll incorporate the simple effects of just flipping an image to hide their identity before they'll go into the extreme end of using special effects. So is it a coincidence then that we see Greer in the same scene now? And Greer also plays in the Disclosure Project with some of the other actors that are in this film? I don't think so. I think it's the same group of actors just being used for different events and they think they can get away with it by just changing their appearance a little. For not a valid reason uh -huh. for a certitude, and we're intersecting the flight path of these B-52s. Because we're here, but because it's good quality food. And he has documented his placement at these facilities at the time that these events occurred. So while we're here talking about the Disclosure Project, we might as well talk about a few other people that are involved in that project that are fakes as well. Keep in mind I previously exposed Carol Rosen for Annie Lloyd backhand. What a name. And in her photographs, that's where I found information on Luke Rudowski and the Rebecca Joy character, the actor that plays Gabriel Giffords. Now the new Gabriel Giffords, of course, is played by an APEC employee, as you see here. Here are additional actors that play in the Avalon and the Disclosure Project that might surprise you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Sheehan. Uh, I'm an attorney and serving as general counsel uh, to the Disclosure Project. I'm a 1967 graduate of Harvard College in American Government Studies and Constitutional Law and a graduate of Harvard Law School. And uh, I served as general counsel and one of the co-counsel for the New York Times in the Pentagon Papers case and was involved in uh, briefing and arguing a case in front of the United States Supreme Court uh, giving permission to the New York Times to publish the classified documents, the 47 volumes of the Pentagon Papers. Uh, I want you to disregard all of the opposing counsel has said. I've noticed on several of Jim Traficant's testimony in front of Congress, you can notice there's a color bleed along his edge of his body typically seen when there's a green screen being used and you notice around the head the top you can see there's a green discoloration just a slight little bit it's a bleed of the green and you also see on the side of his face here that you see there's a very large spot that's tone is green this is typical of someone who doesn't go back and color correct the uh, image that they've set up in front of a green screen I think they're delusionary I think they've had something funny for lunch in their meal. I think they should be handcuffed to a chain link fence, flogged, and all of their hearsay evidence should be thrown the hell out. And if they lie again, I'm going to go over and kick them in a the crotch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Trafficant. Mr. Lewis? Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> all right, here's, uh, here's where we are. And in March... On March 24th, 1967, I was on duty at uh, what we called Oscar Flight. It is a uh, underground capsule, uh, hardened site, uh, about 60 feet underground. We had uh, security guards topside. Uh, the main guard is called a flight security controller. Uh, my commander at the time was December, you became aware of uh, a Fast and Furious. I said, uh, uh, I was on duty at uh, what we called Oscar Flight. It is a. Uh, After the death of Agent Terry, yes. Okay.